Okay, today we're going to talk about dates in JavaScript. So JavaScript has a built-in data type, a date object that we can use to keep track of dates. Um, it doesn't do things like calculate the difference between dates and stuff like that. For things like that, I would recommend there's a JavaScript library called Moment, moment.js, and I will be doing a video about the Moment um, at another time, but uh, for now we want to talk about the date object. So this is the way that you can store a representation of a specific moment in time. Uh, we can change the settings, so the date inside of it is broken up into a whole bunch of different pieces. There's the year, the month, the day, hour, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So you can have values for each one of those, and you can change those values independently to represent a specific moment in time. There's also whether or not you are going to be outputting the time in your current local time, so whatever your time zone is, or if you want to use UTC, the Universal Time Constant, as the reference point, so uh, what used to be known as GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, that can be used as a reference point as well. So let's take a look at the date object and what we can do with it. In my file right here, uh, I've got my shortcut for the console.log function, so I'm going to be using this to output things because I'm going to be outputting a lot of things. And this is the basic syntax here on line 6 for creating a date. If you were to write just this line, what you're going to have is the variable d is a date object, and that will hold, because I didn't pass anything in, it will hold the current time and date from my computer. So if I was to output that, just like this, run it, there we go. Here is the current date and time, and this Z at the end, that means Zulu, or Greenwich Mean Time, UTC. So in Greenwich, England, this is the current time. So it is August 3rd, 2017, and then the T signifies the start of the time portion. It is 4.32 and 4 seconds in the afternoon, and this is the millisecond portion of the seconds. Okay, so that's the basics for creating a date object. Now this date method here, this is the constructor by saying new date. Inside of here, I can create it like this, and this will grab whatever the current time is on my computer. I can put a timestamp inside of here, so I'll show you that. And I'm going to put the, the no, actually we'll start off with there we go, I think that's uh, 1.5 trillion, which is the timestamp that was just recently passed. So 1 trillion, 500 billion, million, hundreds, thousands, and the hundreds. So 1.5 trillion is a timestamp that was recently passed. Uh, this measures the number of milliseconds that have passed since the Unix epoch, which is January 1st at midnight, 1970. January 1st, 1970 at that time. It's kind of a weird way to write the date, but that is the beginning of the Unix epoch and all timestamps are measured from this point. Uh, it doesn't matter which programming language you're using, this is the beginning of it. So 1.5 trillion milliseconds after that, and if I write out what D1 is, there we go. So July 14th at 2.40 in the morning. That was the 1.5 trillion milliseconds since the start of the Unix epoch. So we can see, we can put in nothing. This will give us the current timestamp on your computer. You can enter a number. If you want to target a specific time and you know you want to calculate the timestamp, you can do that. So here I'm saying 40 years from the Unix timestamp, uh, from the Unix epoch, rather. A thousand milliseconds would represent one second. Multiply one second by 60, you've got a minute. Multiply that by 60, you get an hour. Multiply that by 24, you get a day. 365.25 days gives you a year, times 40 gives you 40 years. 
Okay, so if I did D2 new date, and then I put that num in, there we go. So January 1st, 2010, with zero seconds. That is exactly 40 years from the Unix epoch, or the start of the Unix epoch. So we have date for the current time. We can put in numbers for the timestamp. We can also use string. So I have a string representation of a date. It can be the full thing. So as it's written here with the T and the Z at the end, or partially, I could just put this portion of the date if I wanted. So I could leave this off even. And we can say new date and put my string inside there. Run this again. There we go. Here's the final one. So that was the time, 20th July 2012. That's the date portion. And then the time portion is 4 in the morning. So why is it 4 in the morning? Well, in the summer with daylight savings time, the difference in time between where I am and Greenwich, England is 4 hours. Greenwich, England is 4 hours ahead. So because I did not provide a time here, it's going to take 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 as the time portion, which means midnight. Add 4 hours to that, and you get the time in Greenwich, England, and that's why the Z here at the end. So if you don't provide a date, it will provide 0 as the value for... Sorry, if you don't provide a time, it'll take 0 as the value for the time portion, and then it will convert it from where you are locally to a UTC value. Now, once you have these dates, oh, sorry, there is one other way. Um, if you know the different parts, if you're not comfortable writing the string, you can put all the different values in here. So I can put in the year, 2017. I can put in the month. The month is a value from 0 to 11, which seems really odd unless you know that most programming languages, when they're counting things, start at 0. So 0 is January, 11 is December. There's 12 months, 0 to 11 are the numbers that they represent. So I can put in 0 as the month, and then everything else is optional from this point on. You just have to provide a month and a year, but we can say I want the 1st of January, 2017, and then hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. So it gets progressively smaller as we enter this. Uh, hours. 12 minutes, 30 seconds, 0 milliseconds, we'll say 1, 2, 3. And there we are, 2017, January 1st, and I said 12, 30, 0 seconds, 1, 2, 3. So there's the 0 seconds, the 1, 2, 3, and it added... Five, oh, yes, because that's in the winter. That's right. So it's five hours difference between uh, where I am and Greenwich, England. So it added five hours because this was back in January. So this is empty with a timestamp, with a string, or with all the individual ones. These are the different ways, the four different ways that you can create um, a date. A date object which represents a point in time. Now, for changing the different parts, there is a whole series of set methods. So I've got a variable here. Let's just use this D4. Actually, D. Take the current time. D dot set full year. I can say the D was the first one we wrote, so it's right here, 2017-803. And I'm going to change the year to 2020. And then we'll output that date again at the bottom. So there it is originally, and at the bottom, 2020, August 3rd. So that's how we got the year changed.
there are a whole series of other methods. There's one method for each of the portions. So we have um, set hours. There's set minutes. Set month, set date for the day, uh, seconds, milliseconds, and so on. So there's all these different methods that we can use. So hours, it says 60, and that's in Greenwich. So if I change this to 12, there we go. 12 plus the 4 gives me 16 which is what it is currently. So let's change that to 9. There we go. 9 plus the 4 gives me 1 o'clock Greenwich time. Okay, so there's set methods. There are also get methods if I wanted to um, get a portion of the date. Let's say I wanted to get um, just the minutes from this date object. So this date, remember, represents a point in time. It is this point in time right here. I want to get the minutes. It should be that 41. So D is my date object. Get minutes. There we go. There's the 41. So just as there was with the set methods, there's a get method for every set method. So I want to retrieve that small portion of the time. Uh, the only one that is also available as get that's not available as a set is there is a D5, I haven't used that yet. Um, get day. And this is the day of the week. will be a number from 0 to 6. So 1, 1 is a Monday, which doesn't make sense. I'm not sure why it gave me that. T5. D5. Yeah, okay, get day. It's giving me for that. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking 2017. Yes, in 2020. August 3rd in 2020 will be a Monday. That's what we've got. Okay, that's the difference. Now, one last set of methods for outputting. If you were trying to retrieve the whole date and you want to display the entire date, we have a series of methods I'm just going to list a few here, and I'll output a couple of them as examples. So we have to date string, which is a string representation of the current time. So if we were using our variable, it's a d5 to date string. We have to time string. So this one is date portion with local time. This is the date portion in local time to date string this sorry UTC time UTC time this that's the deep default um, ISO string is a, an ISO format date. It's a slightly simplified version of what we're getting here. And the last one that I wanted to show you was to JSON. This one is a um, date for use in a JSON string. So it makes sure that there's no characters that are going to interfere with uh, what's being uh, saved in the JSON or output in the JSON. So these are the UTC values. And then if we want 
the local ones, we can say d5 dot to locale string. By default, it will be whatever the locale is on your computer. Locale string, and you can specify. I want to use the Canadian formatting for this. Local time and date with specified formatting. So different countries use different formatting for dates. The US, Canada have slightly different date formats for this, the order that they place the year, month, and date. And D5, last example, to UTC string. This will give us, as expected, the UTC string. Okay, so let's do a couple of these. date and time portions. So we'll output these five. I'm just going to wrap these all inside of logs. Calls to the log function. And there we go. All right. Let's clear this and run it. Date string doesn't like that one. I will look at the reason for that in a moment. No, it doesn't like that one either. Okay, it doesn't like any of these. Why is that? Oh, because D5 is just the day portion of this. Sorry, D4 is what I should be using for all these. It's not a problem with the methods. It's this object right here has to be a date object. There we go. Save that. Clear this and run this again. There we go. That's what's working properly. So with the date, there we are. There's all the different portions of the date, the day of the week, the month, the year, and the day of the month. And then we have the time portion. GMT minus five is Eastern Standard Time. And here we have the locale string, ENCA, so it's the English Canadian. And down here at the bottom is the UTC string. So different formats that you can get. If you don't want to extract the individual pieces and format them yourself, you do have options like this. So I encourage you to get familiar with these different ones so you know how to output the dates. And if you have a moment, check out moment.js. It's a great JavaScript library for working with dates, and it can simplify a lot of the things that you often want to do, uh, calculating differences between dates, changing dates by, say, adding a week or adding a day, uh, moment provides methods for doing things like that. So, as always, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments, and thank you for watching.